Hi everyone, I'm Trish Connor Cato. Welcome to the Excel 2019 Visual Basic for Applications video course. This course is for beginning users looking to automate repetitive and recurring tasks in Microsoft Excel. VBA is Microsoft's programming language and it's built into the Office applications. Our focus during this course is on Excel specifically. You'll be equipped with the basics to start writing your own VBA code, modify the code behind macros you've already recorded, and have an understanding of how VBA lends itself to creating efficiency in your daily tasks. The course ends with you learning how to deal with code errors known as debugging and how to write error handling code. If you're enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe. If you want to earn certificates and digital badges, please become a member of our Patreon. The link is in our video description. If you have any questions you want answered by one of our instructors, please join our off-site community. The link is in the description as well. As always, if this course has exercise files, you'll find them in the video description below. In the last lesson of this video course, we'll be focusing on debugging code. We've already experienced some coding errors, also referred to as bugs during this course. As a matter of fact, if we haven't, we could consider ourselves lucky as errors and coding go hand in hand. Typos will happen, syntax may be overlooked, math errors may occur, and there are many more things that can cause code errors during program execution. This lesson will introduce you to the three types of errors that can occur during execution and the reasons why they occur. The process of tracing and correcting code errors is known as debugging. The Visual Basic Editor has a debug toolbar that can be used for this purpose. We'll also cover some tips for minimizing errors and what you can do if you cannot resolve them. And you'll see in this lesson why the structure of your code is important during the process of debugging. Code is easier to review when it's organized in a logical structure. So specifically, we will be covering the following topics. The types of coding errors and their causes, using the debug toolbar to investigate errors, and we'll be setting breakpoints, stepping through code, using break mode during run mode, and determining the value of expressions. Then we'll move on to handling errors where you'll gain an understanding of error handling and learning about VBA's error trapping options. We're gonna get into trapping errors with the on error statement, which includes understanding the error object, writing an error handling routine, and working with inline error handling. As mentioned, you'll get tips for minimizing errors and tips on what to do if you cannot resolve them. And finally, you'll be introduced to the object browser window. And we'll review more detail about that when we get there. We're going to be using our sales fiscal year file in this lesson. There are only three types of errors that you may have in your Visual Basic for Applications code. So the first type is known as a logic error. And these are the most difficult errors to locate and Visual Basic will not help you find them. They're usually caused by typos and logic errors will not stop your code execution. Instead, you will have an unexpected outcome. For example, you may have used a minus sign instead of a plus sign in an expression. So it will calculate the expression, but you'll get an unexpected outcome because of the wrong operator that's being used. Then there are runtime errors. A runtime error happens when a line of code cannot be executed. The procedure is halted and a message box will display that defines the error. There is a help button in the message box that can be used to view the help topic associated with that specific type of runtime error. There are many types of runtime errors they're caused by if you divide by zero, that can't be done. If you reference a non-existent workbook or worksheet or other object and referencing an Excel cell that contains an error, 
are a few examples of things that can cause a runtime error. And last but not least, you have syntax errors. Now these are detected by the line editor and the compiler. So as you're typing code, when you get to the end of a line and you press enter, if there is a syntax error in that line, the line will turn red. And examples that can cause this are incomplete expressions and missing arguments. And then syntax errors are also detected by the compiler. So all along we've been compiling and then saving and the compiler checks all lines of code in each procedure and all declarations within the project. A variable declaration is required. If we have that option explicit statement at the top of a module, the compiler will check that all variables are declared and that all objects have correct references to properties, methods, and events. It also checks constructs to ensure the correct required statements are present. So when you have a with block, you need to have the end with statement. When you have an if block, you need to have end if. The compiler will display a message box that describes the error if found. So I mentioned using the debug toolbar in the Visual Basic Editor to investigate errors. The tools that are on that toolbar can be categorized as follows. Tools that help you manually execute the program, tools that suspend the execution of the code, and tools that assist in determining the values of expressions. So there's an illustration of the debug toolbar and its tools. So the first set of tools would be the ones that could help you suspend the code. And then you have a set of tools that can help you manually execute the program. And that would start with like toggle breakpoint all the way through step out. And then the last group of tools, the window tools, I call them, are tools that assist in determining the values of expressions. So this slide is for your future reference. It's just a further description of the debugging tools and their shortcut keys, if any, and a description, a comprehensive description of each tool. Now, most debugging is done when the application is suspended and that's known as break mode. An application is in break mode when a runtime error occurs, a breakpoint is manually inserted into the code, or a stop statement is entered within the code. Some of the tools for debugging can be utilized in design mode and or at runtime, in addition to when the application is in break mode. So for example, the step into tool can be run in break mode and design mode. The immediate window can be run in break mode, design mode, or at runtime. And the watch window can be run in break mode and runtime. Now, before we do this next exercise, I just want to review and I increased the size of the font for three of the tools on the debugging toolbar. And those are the step tools. So we used step into earlier in the course, and we saw that that executed code one statement at a time, one line at a time. There's also the ability to step over code and that would execute code one procedure or one statement at a time. And then you have your step out option, which can overlook a called procedure and execute the remaining lines of the calling procedure. So you'll get more experience with step into, and you'll get new experience with step out in this next lesson. So we're going to start by creating a syntax error. And remember, these would be detected by the line editor when you get to the end of the line and you press enter or by compiling your project, which we've been doing all along. And when you compile, it compiles everything in the module. We're going to force this to happen. I'm in the visual basic editor for sales fiscal year. I'm in module one in the add totals procedure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the end if statement 
And then I'm going to go up and compile the project. Now it gives me a compile error and it specifically tells me block if without end if. So I can click OK and I'm going to put my end if statement back in. And then I'm going to compile again and I don't get the error. Let's do another one. In the if line, we're going to change the not equal to symbol to an exclamation point. Put an exclamation point there. And now click out of that line. And when you click out of that line, the compile error comes up. It says expect it then or go to. And the entire line turns red. We're going to click OK and now go up and compile the project. And this time you get a compile error that says syntax error. So this one's a little bit more specific. It's letting you know there's some kind of syntax error in that line. And this is typical. When you're clicking out of the line, it's the same as pressing enter at the end of it and the line editor kicks in. When you compile, then the compiler kicks in. This message is more specific. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to change the exclamation point back to our not equal symbol. And then I'm going to compile. So now I'm in mod reports and I used my procedure list to get to the consolidate data procedure. That's one that we brought in from a text file and we're going to go to the view menu, hover over toolbars and click on debug. So the debug toolbar comes up on the screen. Now we're looking for a specific line of code and before we find it, I'm going to decrease the width of the project explorer and properties panes on the left, because we're going to end up viewing this procedure side by side with the Excel workbook after we set our manual breakpoint. So we're going to scroll down in the procedure. It says select case FRM generate reports dot period. When you find that line, you can be anywhere within it. And on the debug toolbar, if you hover over the hand icon, you'll see that it says toggle breakpoint and it gives you the shortcut key, which is F9. I'm going to just click the hand and it turns that line maroon and it puts a maroon oval in the gray bar to the left of the line. That is indicative of a manual breakpoint. When you set a manual breakpoint and you execute the code, it will execute it up until the breakpoint. And then it goes into what's known as break mode, as you'll see in a moment. So I'm going to arrange this so that my editor window is on the right side of my screen and I have my Excel file on the left side of my screen. And in the Excel file, I'm going to go ahead and start this procedure by running the show form procedure from the quick access toolbar. So it's going to bring up the form. And in the period frame, I'm going to select month and then choose August from the combo list. And I'm going to select salesperson in the sales frame and click display. So if you notice on your Excel screen, the reports sheet has been created, but it's not populated. And if you look at your editor screen, now that line that where we set the manual breakpoint has yellow shading and a yellow arrow in the gray border to the left of it. And so it ran all the code up until it gets to that line. And now it's in what's called break mode. Now that we're in break mode, we can use our step tools. I'm going to just display my debug toolbar again. And your step tools are to the right of the hand. So there's your step into that does line by line. You have step over, which goes procedure by procedure or statement by statement. And then you have step out that would skip any called procedures or just execute the rest of the code as one block. So the first thing we're going to do is step into, and it goes down to the next line. 
and we'll do step over at this point. That's still within that for each block. We're gonna step over again. It goes down to compare, which is another statement. We're gonna step over again and it goes to the next statement. And now go ahead and click on step out and it runs the rest of the code and you can see that it's going through your Excel workbook and ultimately you'll get the pop-up asking if you wanna permanently delete the report sheet in the sales fiscal year. I'm gonna go ahead and click delete and it opened the reports file and gave me my pivot table. We're gonna go ahead and close the reports file and don't save the changes and I'm gonna just maximize the Visual Basic Editor window again. I'm gonna expand my Project Explorer window so that I can get back to Mod Reports. And notice it didn't remove our breakpoint. So I'm gonna click in that line in Consolidate Data Procedure and go click the hand again to get rid of the breakpoint. And typically after using these processes, I go ahead and click the reset button on the debug toolbar, just to make sure there's nothing lingering in memory. You can go ahead and save. So now I'm gonna challenge you and give you an on your own exercise. In the same consolidate data procedure, I'm gonna have you set the breakpoint Again, at the same line, select case FRM generate reports dot period. And then I want you to execute the show form procedure until the program enters break mode. So go ahead and pause the video and do those things. At this point, and I have my windows side by side again, the program has halted execution at the point where it created the report sheet. And now we can look at a couple of the window debug tools. So with my debug toolbar, to the right of your step tools are your window tools. So the first one we're going to select is the locals window, and it opens in a pane on the lower half of the editor window. And what it's showing you is the current value of any variables. If you look at mod reports under expression, it has a plus sign. When you expand it, you'll see your public variables and their values at this point. It also on the right tells you the type of variable. So the locals window will show you that when you're in break mode. And I just collapsed mod reports again. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and press F8. So it's at my break line. I'm gonna press F8 so it steps into the code. And I'm gonna F8 until I get down to the on error resume next statement. So now there's a, in the expression window, the value of compare, the compare expression is reports. If I hover over compare in the code window, you can see that it's letting me know the value of that variable right in the code window when it's in break mode. In that compare line in the code window, I'm gonna have you select the function C date, which is a conversion function right, converts the date on the sheet tab, the date, the text string of the date on the sheet tab to an actual date. So we're starting with the letter C in C date, and we're gonna highlight it until we get to the first closing parenthesis after compare. So just the function and its argument in parentheses is selected. On your debug window, the next to the last icon is quick watch, another window. So when we have that expression selected, it gives us the context. So it lets us know the VBA project, mod reports, consolidate data procedure, the expression itself, and then its value is a type mismatch. 
because there's text on the sheet tab and then we're converting it to a date. So quick watch gives you different information than can show in your locals window. And we're going to close the quick watch window and you can use the X to close the locals window. And now what you can do is you can go ahead, step out of your code. And I deleted the report sheet and I'm going to close the reports workbook without saving the changes. And I'll just maximize my editor window again. We're going to start forcing some runtime errors to happen. And it is best practice to write error trapping code to try to avoid runtime errors. You might not be able to avoid all of them, but it will be helpful to avoid as many as possible. Error trapping options are set in the options dialog box in the editor where we set the require variable declaration earlier and changed our font size. To review those options before we get into error handling, they're listed on this slide. So there's three options. You can break on all errors. So that means even if you've written error handling code, a break in execution will occur if a runtime error is encountered. So it really disables any error handling code that you've written. Break in class module, the execution will break and an error message will display when an unhandled error occurs within a class module. This option is only useful for debugging. And then you have break on unhandled errors. The execution will break and an error message will display when any unhandled error occurs. And again, we'll review those options as we go over our next set of exercises. There are some methods to error handling in visual basic for applications an on error statement is used to enable what's called an error trap. If an error is generated after this statement is executed, the error handler becomes active and passes control to the code on the on error statement that it's is specified. And there are two types of on error statements on error, go to and on error, resume next. I have the syntax. So for on error, go to, then there's a corresponding line label and then on error, resume next. Once an on error statement traps an error, the error can be handled in one of three ways. You could write an error handler. This is a routine that is pointed to in the on error go to statement line label. The line label statements address one or more types of errors for the procedure. Another method is ignoring the error. And that's what happens when you use the on error resume next statement to trap the error and handle it by moving to the next line of code. And then you have inline error handling, and that's also on error resume next. You can use it to trap the error. You enter code in the procedure to check for errors after any statements that are expected to generate them. You'll see in the upcoming exercise that the error object can be used to examine information about an error that has just occurred. The error object has a global scope and has properties and methods that are useful for finding out information about the current error, clearing error information and generating errors. The properties contain information about the error that just occurred in the current procedure. So you have a number property and it's the identification number of the most recent error and numbers represent different types of errors. You have a description property, which describes the error and corresponds to the error number. And then you have a source property, which is a name that identifies the component module and or procedure that generated the error. And all three of those properties have data types as listed on this slide. The error object only has two methods, clear and raise. Clear resets all the error objects properties to zero or zero length strings. This method is used automatically when any on error statement is encountered. And then you have the raise method, which generates a runtime error. And it can specify the number of an error defined by VBA, Excel, or another application 
such as word. And you're like, what is she talking about? Well, it'll start making sense when we start doing it, which is going to be right now. We're going to start by causing a situation that will lead to a runtime error. So I'm in my working directory. And what we're going to do is we're going to rename the Excel file called reports. We're going to just name it reports with the number two. And now I'm going to bring up my sales fiscal year file. In Excel, I'm going to start the show form procedure from the quick access toolbar. I'm going to select all for period and model in the sales frame and click display. Eventually you'll get the runtime error has an error number one zero zero four. Sorry, we couldn't find my path reports.xlsx. Is it possible it was moved, renamed or deleted? And we're going to click the debug button on that message. So it takes us over to mod reports to the sub procedure finish report and the error is being caused when it tries to execute that workbook.open file name line because it's looking for a file named reports. Now I'm going to go up to the standard toolbar and I'm going to click the reset button. I'm going to go then go back to mod reports and notice that it cleared that break in the code for us. So now before we write error handling code, I want to show you the options that are available for you. We saw them on a the slide. So I'm going to go up to the tools menu and choose options. And when I get in there at top, I'm going to go to the general tab. And on the right side, you have your error trapping options. So remember, break on all errors really means ignore any error handling code that you would write. Your other choices are break in class module or break on unhandled errors. I usually use break on unhandled. Can't really say usually. It just depends on what kind of project I'm working on. And I'm going to click OK to get out of there. So now we're going to modify this finish report sub procedure by using the on error go to statement. So we're going to click at the end of our variable declaration line, dim sheet as worksheet, press enter a couple of times, and then you're going to type on error go to and go to is one word here and then error handler. In this example, error handler is what we're calling our line statement. So on error, go to error handler. We're going to go down and click at the end of the set fields called procedure and press enter. And on this line, we're going to type exit sub. And I'll explain it after we get the rest of this in. We're going to press enter a couple of times and then we're going to type error handler, what we named our line label, followed by a colon, enter, and we're going to do a select case statement here. Select, select case and we're going to do error dot and the list pops up and we're going to select number. So that's the property of the error object. So select case error num number, enter tab, and then we're going to say case 1004. That's the number of the runtime error we got. So case 1004, enter tab, message box, and in parentheses and quotes, the reports workbook is not available, period. Close your quotes, close the paren. Enter. We're going to outdent and we're going to do case else, enter, tab, message box again. And this one is going to say error number. We're going to do a concatenated statement here, colon, space, double quote, 
our ampersand for concatenation, air dot number again, ampersand. We're going to do VBLF, which is line feed. We're going to do an ampersand, and we're going to do our line continuation character of space underscore enter tab. In double quotes, error description, colon, space, double quote, space, ampersand, and air dot description. So another property of the error object there. And we're going to close the parentheses. We're going to enter an out dent until we get to the same margin as select case. And we need our end select statement there. And now we'll break down what we just did. So using on error go to, what we've done is we said, if there's an error when this procedure runs, go to our line. So error handler is the line, what we, what we named it. So if there is an error, it's going to go down. And before it gets to that line, it's going to exit the sub procedure. Now this is only if there's an error, we don't want it to try to keep running the sub procedure. We wanted to exit the sub procedure and go to the error handler. So we did a select case statement. If the error number is 1004, it's going to show a message box saying the reports workbook is not available. If it's a different error number, it's going to show a message box that gives the error number. And then on the next line, the error description, both are pulled from the error object. So that's how you can trap this error. Go ahead and compile and save. Before we test this error handling code, we need to switch back over to Excel and delete the reports sheet tab. Confirm your deletion. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and la launch the show form procedure again. I'm going to select the same selections, all model and display. And this time, instead of getting a runtime error, we get our pop-up because it was error number 1004. The reports workbook is not available. You can go ahead and click OK on that message box. Now this time we're going to leave the reports sheet here. And what I'd like you to do is go back to your working directory and rename reports to back to reports and then come back over here to your sales fiscal year file. Now that we have the file renamed, we're going to set up a situation where we will use inline error handling by using the on error resume next statement. In your file, go ahead and launch the show form again. And this time I'm going to select month and choose July. And I'll just do salesperson in the sales frame and display. We're getting runtime error, another 1004. That name is already taken. Try a different one. And we're going to select debug. So it brings us to the consolidate data sub procedure where activesheet.name equals reports. Well, remember when we're running this procedure, it has been creating the report sheet for us. It's already there. So we're getting this runtime error because you can't have two sheet names with the same name reports. We're going to go ahead and use our reset button on the toolbar. And I'm going to make my way back to mod reports and I'm still in the consolidate data procedure. And after our variable declarations, we are going to press enter after dim sheet as worksheet a couple of times. And we're going to type on era resume next. And then we're going to go down to the line that says active sheet dot name equals report. Click at the end of it and press enter a couple of times and tab. And we're going to type an if statement here. So 
if and then air dot number equals 1004, then enter and tab active sheet dot delete sheets on the next line and in parentheses double quotes reports dot cells dot select enter selection dot clear enter air dot clear that's the clear method of the error object so clear out the error enter and then I'm going to shift tab to outdent and type my end if statement and you want to go ahead and compile and save so because the report sheet was already there when it ran this it created a new sheet. So if I go look at Excel, I have this empty sheet three. And so what this is saying, and that's the active sheet. If after it goes to active sheet dot name equals report and it gets that error, it's gonna say active sheet delete, which is that generic sheet. And then it's going to select the report sheet and all of its cells and clear everything off of that sheet. And then it's going to clear the error as well. So that's what this one is going to do. Let's switch over to Excel. And the first thing we're gonna do is get rid of that extra sheet before the report sheet, just delete it. And go ahead and launch your form. And we'll do month July again here. And I think I'm gonna do model and display. So now it's letting us know that it's going to delete this sheet. Now I'm on sheet four and we're gonna select delete to confirm it. And then it's gonna go through the process. And you'll get your second delete prompt to delete the reports sheet. And now you have your reports workbook open with the pivot table. That one covers the case of if you forget to delete the report sheet from sales fiscal year, we are trapping the error and resuming the rest of the code. You can close the reports workbook without saving the changes. So I promised you some tips for minimizing errors and also some tips on what to do if you can't resolve an error. I'm going to just stop talking and let you review this slide. Hopefully some of these tips will help you avoid errors and some of what to do if you can't resolve them. These are from my personal experience. Oftentimes if I ask someone else to look at my code or I'm explaining the issue I'm having with it, the explanation will become clear to me during that process or someone else might look at it and instantly see what's causing the error. The object browser allows you to browse through all available objects in your project and see their properties, methods, and events. In addition, you can see the procedures and constants that are available from object libraries in your project. You can also get online help as you browse in the object browser. So you've already noticed some icons in the editor environment, particularly in the list that are displayed, and you'll see those icons in the object browser window as well. So I've given you a table here with the icons and what they represent. Within the Visual Basic Editor, I can go to the View menu and choose Object Browser. Its shortcut key is F2. And so it opens kind of like in its own window. And notice at the top, it says All Libraries. If you do the drop down there, you could just see the Excel library, or the Microsoft Forms library, or Office, or VBA, or VBA project. 
I'm going to select VBA project. And so this is our project. And what it's showing on the left side under classes, these are the objects that are in our VBA project. So it's showing all those worksheets and it's showing our form. If I click on FRM generate reports, then it shows you things. So these are properties, events, methods. It's our objects, our controls like month and period and sales. Those are our frames. So you're seeing everything that's in your project. As I continue to scroll down, I see the click event for the cancel button and the display button. So you're seeing events, properties, all of those things and methods that make everything kind of work together. And some of those properties we didn't use on the objects on our form. Like we didn't use the print form property, but it's available because it's in the VBA project library. So if I click on CMD display click on the right hand side, and I look almost at the bottom of the screen, it just lets me know that it's a private sub procedure and it's a member of the form generate reports that we created. And you can feel free to explore the object browser. If there's anything in there that you want more information on, you can click on it and then you'll have your help icon up here in the upper right. So you can explore help topics from in here as well. And to close the object browser, I'm going to use the second close window, the smaller one in the upper right hand corner of the screen to close the object browser. Our last topic in this course concerns how to protect your code. So if you have end users using this Excel file and they have the developer tab or they know how to switch over to Visual Basic for Applications Editor, you may not want people to be able to access your code. So you can password protect it. It's kind of a two-step process. So you're gonna go in the Visual Basic Editor, you're gonna go to the Tools menu, and you'll notice on the list you have an option for VBA Project Properties. Let's click it. There are two tabs, you're on the General tab, you're going to go to the protection tab and you're going to check the box that says lock project for viewing. And then you have to give it a password and confirm it for training purposes. I'm going to just use the word train in all lowercase and I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to save. Now you're going to have to close both Visual Basic and your Excel file for this to take effect. So go ahead and close both of these windows and then reopen your sales fiscal year macro enabled file. Once you have your file reopened, you can Alt F11 to get back into the Visual Basic Editor. If you expand your sales fiscal year VBA project, you'll see that it prompts you for your password. And those who do not have the password will not be able to see the objects, forms, and modules and access them. So again, once you set your password, you need to save and enclose VBA and Excel and reopen the file for that password protection to take effect. To recap this lesson, we started by going over the different types of coding errors and their causes. You learned how to use the debug toolbar to investigate errors. We set breakpoints. We used our step debugging tools. We entered break mode during run mode, and we used the locals window and quick watch to determine the value of expressions and variables. When it comes to handling errors, we got an overview of error handling and VBA's error trapping options. And then we moved on to trapping errors with the on error statement. We learned about the error object and its methods and properties. We wrote an error handling routine by using on error go to with a line handler. And we also worked with inline error handling 
Um, actually, sorry, I got the map opposite. The error handling routine was the on error resume next. And the inline error handling was on error go to. We reviewed some tips for minimizing errors and what to do if you can't get them resolved. We did a quick tour of the object browser. When you're new to VBA, that can be very helpful. So you can learn about different properties and methods that are available for different objects. And then we end it with password protecting your code. Thank you for attending Excel 2019 Visual Basic for Applications video course. Thanks for watching. Don't forget we also offer live classes in office applications, professional development, and private training. Visit LearnIt.com for more details. Please remember to like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for choosing LearnIt.